welcome, Wonder School friends, to the first day of our virtual vacation. Today, we are not actually traveling anywhere because we need to prepare first. So um, there's a few things that we need to get together uh, before we actually leave for our trip. We need a few things. One of the things that we need is a map to figure out where we're going to go. Another thing that we need is a passport if we want to go out of the country. We also need to buy some plane tickets. And let's see, there's another thing that we need. Hmm. Oh, I know. We need to pack a suitcase. Okay, so I'm going to move into this board a little bit closer and we are going to pack a suitcase. Okay, so we are going to pretend that this board is our suitcase and we are going to talk about how we pack our clothes first. So there are going to be some clothes that we will definitely want to pack more than one of. Um, we are going to be traveling for seven days. We're going to the seven continents. And so there are some things here that we'll want to change every single day. They will get dirty every day. Let's see what, what do you think those things might be? Do you think it's the coat? No. What about the shoes? Well, if the shoes get dirty, we can just wash them off with a cloth or something. But a shirt and socks are things that get dirty that we are gonna want to change every day. So because we're going for seven days, I'm going to write a seven for a short sleeve shirt and seven pairs of socks. And then, pants and shorts. So some of the places that we go to are going to be warm and some of the places we go to are going to be cool. So we will want some of each, some pants and some shorts. So I'm going to write four for pants and three pairs of shorts. That way we have a good mix of both of them. We'll have one more pair of pants and that's gonna be okay. That'll be perfect. So let's talk about the things that we only probably need one of. We have shoes. We definitely only need one pair of shoes because we're also going to bring a pair of boots for if we have to go through the snow. And all of these other things, we only need to bring one of. They're to keep us warm. So I'm going to put the number one over those ones. So now we've packed our clothes. Now we're going to pack our toiletries or the things we use to keep our body clean. So the first things that we need to do pack are a hairbrush and a comb and that's to keep our hair neat. And then we need a toothbrush and floss and toothpaste. And those help keep our, our mouth clean. We will need shampoo and conditioner. What do those things help keep clean? They help keep our hair clean. Let's see, what helps keep our whole body clean. What do we use in the bath to do that? We use soap. And sometimes you use a washcloth for that too. And lastly, we have to dry our body off. What do you use to dry your body off? We need a towel. So all of these things are also things that we just need to pack one of. So this looks great. We have packed our suitcase. OK, 
Okay, so we've packed our suitcase and we have everything we need to go on our trip. Um, and so let's get into our stories. We have, today we are going to read about a girl who makes a map and we are going to read about a chicken who goes on three different adventures and we're going to read a book about a girl who goes on a plane ride. Have any of you ever gone on a plane before? I have only gone on a plane a handful of times and so it's still very exciting for me and I bet it's still very exciting for you too as well. So um, let's get into these stories now. Me on the map. This is me. This is me in my room. This is a map of my room. She drew this herself and there she is right there and there's her bed and her desk and a dresser and some books. This is me on the map of my room. This is my house. This is a map of my house. This is my room on the map of my house. This is my street. This is a map of my street. This is my house on the map of my street. She lives on Oak Street. This is my town. This is a map of my town. She lives in Pleasant Grove, and there's a river that goes through her town. This is my street on the map of my town. So we see that this might be a school building, and we see it here too. And there's the river, and there's the river on the map. And let's see, on this map we can see other things. We can see a couple parks. Here's a park with a pond. And here's a park with a little basketball court that she drew. And there's a couple churches, one here and one there. And there's the name of her town, Pleasant Grove. This is my state. This is a map of my state. She lives in the state called Kansas. And there's the town she lives in, Pleasant Grove. This is my town on the map of my state. This is my country, the United States of America. Do you guys see the Statue of Liberty right here? And Mount Rushmore and the Golden Gate Bridge. This is a map of my country. This is my state on the map of my country. She lives in Kansas and we live a couple states over in Idaho. That's our state on the map of our country. This is my world. It is called Earth. It looks like a giant ball. If you could unroll the world and make it flat, it would look something like this map of the world. 
this is my country on the map of the world. And we have seven continents in our world. We have North America and South America. We have Africa and we have Europe. It's yellow, it's kind of in the crack there. We have Asia, Asia is really big, and we have Australia and Antarctica. So here's how I find my special place on the map. First, I look at the map of the world and find my country. Do you remember what country she lives in? She lives in the United States of America, and it's right here, it's orange. Then I look at the map of my country and find my state. Do you remember what state she lives in? We live in Idaho and she lives in Kansas and her state is really bright yellow right there in the middle. Our state is light green right here. Then I look at the map of my state and I find my town. So there's her town Pleasant Grove right there. Then I look at the map of my town and find my street. Here she's pointing to her street and this is the map of her town. She lives on, do you remember, Oak Street. And on my street I find my house. She lives in kind of an orangish house, orangey brown. And in my house, I find my room. And in my room, I find me. Just think. In rooms, in houses, on streets, in towns, in countries, all over the world, everybody has their own special place on the map. And look at all these kids on the map. Look at how different they are and they're all doing these interesting different things. And some of them are dressed warmly because it's cold where they live. And some are dressed like they're ready to go swimming. She lives in some place warm. Well, it's warm right now in this picture. And we have, well, uh, this, this person, this child, I, I don't know whether it's a girl or a boy. Um, she has a llama. And this guy is riding a camel. And this guy, he is carrying water for his family. And this guy's playing soccer. And ooh, this, this guy is, he's hunting. He's learning how to hunt with falcons. And she is playing with fireworks. Hmm. <laughs> All different kinds of things that they're doing. Just like me. Just like me on the map. Louise, The Adventures of a Chicken. Chapter One, Louise at Sea. Louise longed for adventure. She left the hen house and went to sea where the water was deep and dark. Louise stood alone on the deck of the ship and let the wind ruffle her feathers. The sailor spoke a language she did not understand. Blarney, Blarney! Just as she was thinking that the sea was not quite the adventurous place she had imagined it would be, a pirate ship appeared on the horizon. Pirate! 
it! <gasps> Louise watched the black-sailed ship draw near. Her heart beat fast within her feathered breast. Here at last was true adventure. The pirates boarded the ship and helped themselves to everything that was not nailed down. That this included Louise. Look, shouted a one-armed pirate, I have found a chicken! He held Louise up high over his head. Fricassee the chicken! Fricassee the chicken! shouted a pirate with extremely dirty hair. No, 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 the chicken! She must be fried, said a gold-toothed pirate. The pirates argued heatedly about how best to consume Louise. Listening to them made Louise's heart beat alarmingly fast in her feathered breast. Stewed, shouted one pirate. With dumplings, said another. Who cares how, shouted a third. Let's just cook her. The pirates were still arguing when a storm began to brew. The wind howled, thunder boomed, rain crashed down. The ship was tossed about on the high seas until it cracked in two and began to sink. Louise saved herself by clinging to a piece of timber. She floated past the pirate with dirty hair. He reached out for her with both hands. Fricasseed, he said, and then he disappeared into the mysterious ocean depths. The wind stopped howling. The sea became calm. The sun rose. Louise used her wings to paddle. As she worked, she thought often and quite fondly of the warm, dry hen house. On her seventh day alone at sea, Louise spied land. She guided her makeshift craft to shore and hopped all the way back to the farm. She arrived just in time for dinner. Where have you been, Louise? asked an old hen named Monique. Oh, here and there, said Louise. She hopped past Monique. She went into the hen house and settled down in the straw. She tucked her beak beneath her wing. She closed her eyes, and there, safe in the warm hen house, Louise slept the deep and dreamless sleep of the true adventurer. Chapter Two, Louise Up High. Still Louise longed for adventure. When the circus came to town, Louise left the hen house and followed the bright lights and loud music. She ended up in line for auditions. Moi? What is your act? The ringmaster asked. Louise flapped her wings. She clucked. Cluck? No, no, said the ringmaster. What is your act? Louise strutted back and forth. Now see here, said the ringmaster, if you want to join the circus, you must have an act. But mon chéri, said Mitzi the aerialist, look at her. See how she moves. She is meant, of course, to be on the high wire. Uh, the high wire was actually quite high. Louise walked its length carrying a pink umbrella in her beak. Far below, people clapped and cheered. Louise looked down at the world and was charmed to discover that everything had become very small. However, too soon, walking the high wire with a pink umbrella became rather mundane and Louise found herself longing for a little excitement. It was then that the lion got loose. 
Louise's heart beat fast within her feathered breast. Here at last was true adventure. She became so excited that she dropped the pink umbrella and lost her balance. She teetered. She tottered. She fell. The lion positioned himself carefully. He smacked his lips. He opened his mouth. Louise flapped her wings and at the last minute she managed to rise out of reach of the lion's jaws. The lion roared. The audience cheered. Louise, her heart beating much, much too fast in her feathered breast, landed on the ground and started to run. Ahead of her, she spied a clown. She leaped atop his head. The clown put a, his hat on, covering Louise. Safe in the clown's wig, hidden beneath his hat, Louise thought of the hen house and what a quiet, spectacularly lion-free place it was. She decided it was time to head home. Goodbye, my sweet Kokavin, called Mitzi as Louise left the circus. Goodbye, my darling, daring chicken. Uh, but you can't leave, the ringmaster said. We have just designed a most unique and death-defying act. Louise ignored him. She hopped down the road toward home. Do you see what he had planned for Louise to do? <laughs> when she arrived back at the farm, Monique said, What have you been doing, Louise? Oh, this and that, said Louise. She hopped past Monique and went into the hen house. She settled herself comfortably in the straw. She tucked her beak beneath her wing. She closed her eyes, and there, safe in the warm hen house, Louise slept the deep and peaceful sleep of the true adventurer. Chapter 3 Louise Unbound. But Louise continued to long for adventure. She left the hen house and journeyed to a land far away where she discovered a fabulous bazaar. Louise strolled the length of the market, admiring the plump tomatoes and the green asparagus, the winking jewelry, and the colorful cloth. The vendors called out greetings to her, and Louise nodded politely in return. Inside a dusty purple tent, she held out her wing to a fortune teller, who examined the feathers closely and said in a heavily accented voice, Mmm, yes, I see much adventure. I see the crossing of the seas, the walking of the wires. Also, I see the dark stranger. Louise didn't think much of this fortune, but she nodded her thanks and left the tent where she immediately met a tall, dark stranger who swept her off her feet and shook her very hard. The man yelled at her. Louise couldn't understand what he was saying, but it was obvious that he was quite angry. Her heart began to beat fast in her feathered breast. The man carried Louise away by her feet. At last, here at last was True Adventure! He put her in a cage that was full of other chickens and locked the cage tight. Louise was being held against her will. She was a prisoner. The other chickens did not seem to be aware of the injustice. Louise tried to rally them. Chickens do not belong in cages, she told them. They looked at her. Chickens must roam free, she said. The other chickens turned away from her. 
Louise twisted her head out between the wires and examined the lock, and then she set to work picking it. Above her, the sun burned high in the sky. As she worked, it slowly began its descent. Finally, at dusk, Louise's patient work paid off, and the lock fell open with a creaky sigh. We are free, said Louise to the other chickens. The news appeared to stun them. Free, said Louise again. She hopped to the ground and gestured to them to follow her. One by one, the other chickens left the cage. An old mud-colored hen pecked at the hard-packed earth and gave a tentative cluck of pleasure. Two gray hens gazed up the twilight sky in wonder. Looking at them, Louise felt a wave of longing. She missed, suddenly, her sister hens. She missed the hen house. She wanted to go home. And so she headed west, back to the farm. Oh, look, she's sitting on top of a camel. And look, she's riding in a boat. And here she is in the basket of a hot air balloon. At the end of her long journey, Monique was there waiting for her. She said, Oh, Louise, where have you been? And Louise looked at Monique and said, I will tell you. Chapter 4 And she did. The hens gathered round. They trembled as Louise told them of her adventure on the high seas. They murmured in approval. They murmured in alarm as she described the lion. They clucked in disapproval when they heard of the imprisoned chickens. As they listened, their hearts beat fast, fast within their feathered breasts. They said, oh heavens, Louise, they said, my goodness, Louise, they said, what true adventures you have had, Louise. Yes, said Louise, I have. And when she was done with the telling, she settled down in her nest and tucked her beak beneath her wing. Her sister hens did the same. Outside the hen house, it began to rain. And inside the hen house, safe and warm, all the chickens slept the deep and dreamless and peaceful sleep of true adventurers. The End Fly by Nathan Clement The airport is filled with passengers ready to fly. The gate agent says, now boarding. Passengers present their tickets at the gate. The baggage crew loads the cargo hold. Cargo doors are closed, calls the ground crew. The pilot calls, Roger, brakes released, ready for push. Roger, says the ground crew. Then the tug pushes the plane away from the gate. Ground control in the tower calls, you are clear to taxi. Soon the plane rushes down the runway. 
the pilot pulls back on the yoke and the plane climbs into the air. Some passengers read. Some watch clouds. There's the window. Some snooze. This guy's snoozing right here. Are we flying a long way? Asks a girl. Yes, says her mother, but it will go fast. And this is their view of the ground. And here's some farmland and a barn. And there's a house with a swimming pool. The time flies. Then the pilot announces, thank you for flying with us. The flight attendants collect trash, put the food service carts back into the galley and are seated as the plane approaches the airport. The pilot checks with tower control. You're clear to land, they tell her. Prepare for landing, the pilot says. She adjusts the flaps and lowers the landing gear. The co-pilot takes the controls and touches down. Smooth, says the pilot. Welcome to Indianapolis, announces the lead flight attendant. Claim your baggage on carousel six. The flight is now over. Your first flight. You've earned your wings, says the pilot. And there's the girl and her dog. <laughs> joining me here at Wonder School on day one of our virtual vacation. Uh, come back tomorrow. We are going to be traveling all around the continent of North America. We live on North America, but that doesn't mean that we won't be traveling because there's lots of places in North America. We are going to be reading stories from Canada, the United States, and Mexico. So I hope to see you online tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.